uh, I'd do a skew chisel project tonight because I know how many of you uh, love skew chisels. Uh, just adjusting my settings on there, so that's better. Uh, so tonight uh, I'll show you how how to use a skew. Nice and simple, nothing to be scared of, even though everybody is. Uh, so uh, we'll look at the choices. So I'll just switch to me overhead camera. The standard one is rectangle. It's the original one. Uh, what's been out since Lerma created. The next version I've got is a road edge skew. Now both these edges are rolled over. The advantage is they slide better on your tool rest. And that's the advantage of these. Just put it in there, you can see a bit better. These slide on your tool rest. Uh, so that's the advantage. Disadvantage is if you want to cut these, is you learn when you have your long point down, you're sitting on a round edge, so it's not stable. The wholesalers, manufacturers, decided lane to have road edge on the short point and on the long point a flat edge so that's another hybrid uh then of course there's the other one which is the oval skew which i don't have uh i've used one i find it vibrates a lot more because it's so thin at these sides uh it gets very thin on both sides so i find they vibrate so I'm not too much of a lover of lead. Uh, the last one I have is a round skew. Uh, so again, slides easy, but again, you've not got the stability for cutting V-cuts. But there again, uh, I don't worry too much because uh, I can just switch to the other one. I can cut these with this, uh, or to the owners, let's say. So again, it's just... Uh, a lot of it is down to personal preference. So again, I'm back with you again. I've just got to bring one of my screens down a bit because that's better. Uh, I'm just nipping off the top of my screen anyway. So uh, so tonight I've just got a block of wood. It's about an inch and a quarter. Uh, go make like a honey dipper with it. Uh, does it need to be in this size? It could be slightly smaller, but I want to show you several options tonight. So I've got to be slightly larger. So uh, uh, we've got more choices. So again, just go to Mark. So we'll go back to the top camera. Let's get that. Just go to Mark roughly the centre. So again, I'm just holding my pencil between my fingers, keeping my fingers against the side, and drawing four lines. Alone, we can say very, very close in centre. Same again at the other end. Again, I've just looked at my cameras and I would estimate I'm about a 10, well, 15 seconds plus delay from the output I'm doing to what you are actually seeing yourselves. So again, we can just get a brad all and just mark the centre there on both ends. We're going to be using a four prong drive tonight. So again, uh, just standard four prong drive. If anybody's not familiar with them, uh, just need to go back up to my equipment. And then, there we go. Not my face plate off, put the right one on. That's a four prong drive. You see the four prongs at the end. Uh, so again, uh, we'll just go back off that one and then we'll go back up. Uh, again, let me just get rid of that one. It's just not clicked off. I've just been reprogramming uh, my stream deck earlier. Uh, and I know one or two... I've had problems with just some of them there, it's gone now. So uh, it's just a bit of a delay on it. Uh, I've got so many photos on. Now we're on. 
laptop again. I'll put it back on there, then you can see better. Uh, so I'm just going to knock this in with a, foot, with a mallet. It's a bit of a time lag tonight. Uh, a lot more than normal. So again, just putting that on there. Again with a mallet, so you do not damage the end here. So again, we'll just go back to the top. So put that in there. We've got enough in there just to grip. Just go move it around to there. Move my tailstock up. Lock it off. Just wind that in. Again, I just need sufficient pressure for that to grip. So, we're all familiar with roughing down. How many ways is there? Uh, several ways. Again, I'm just going to put my safety specs on. I've got me dust uh, filter running. So, uh, that's cleaning the air at the moment. The most common way to rough down is with a spindle roughing gouge. So, again, let's just have a go with this. So again, handle down, just slide it up the tool rest, pick it up the cut, then just slide off. Pick up the cut, slide off. So that is a way that we do very often. A parting tool, standard grind, Standard parting tool, handle down, slide it up, enter a cut, push in. So you can see on there, just go move my camera because I can just see better. Better, that's better for you. Right, in. So, as you can see, parting tool, no problem at all. So, uh, that cuts without any problem. What about a skewed little to rough down? Uh, certainly would not recommend it on anything large at all. Uh, I would use a spindle roofing gouge, but on a small diamond tonight, this. When I turn the skew chisel over, just get that dirt off there. If you look at it, it comes up to a V. If I put the parting tool on top, it's a V again. They're both angled. Yes, this has got a longer angle than this shorter one of the skew. But it's quite safe to use. So handle down, again keeping it more square on. So the front edge is parallel with the lathe bed. So that's just cutting like it, a parting tool. So as you can see, that's roughed it down, no problem at all. It's just like using a very wide parting tool or beading tool. So there's no problem there. Uh, again, I've got the chat in front of me, but I'm getting no comments yet. Uh, I did have problems earlier with the stream. So I may be demonstrating to myself. I'm just going to look at me over screen to see. Uh, if I can see, yeah, I've got some participants. So uh, if anybody wants to make a comment, please do. Then I can know that we are live. If not, I won't go putting this up afterwards. Uh, so you'll see it on my video. So again, go that to spindle roofing gouge. So I can just roof that down. Which is best? I'd use a spindle roofing gouge. Uh, 
purely uh, s because by using a skew chisel, which is safe, like I say, it does wear down, it just wear the ears quicker, so it goes blunt. And a skew chisel is more for refinement rather than for roughing down. But something like a pen blank, anything like that, would I use? Uh, a skew chisel, yes, because this is a bit like a, it's too large. So again, I've got it down, so it's not cutted. Why? Because that shaving has got stuck there behind the bevel. So that's firstly round now. So I'll just stop the lathe and then move over to get rid of this last part here. Not bothered about this far end because that's going to be parted off at the end. So this piece is a piece of sycamore. Traditional woods for food are sycamore and beech. Uh, ash is non-toxic, but the only problem with ash is very open grain, so it can cause problems. So I'll just go put that there. Just go get parting tool to part down this end, because I want to part down here, uh, so we know where it's going to be uh, cut off at the end. So again, just go down there. Only want to go part way, just to identify the waste wood. Yes, uh, would it matter if there was a hole in it? Uh, no, but uh, I prefer to cut it clean. So again, uh, just move it over and mark the other end where we go part off. Again, don't want to go too close to the four prawns. So now that's given the overall length of what we're looking for. Right, start with this end first. So again, put my pencil down somewhere behind me. Uh, we're going to be making something of this shape. And then that's going to have overtly parting tools, grooves cutted. Uh, so I'm just going to get my other parting tool out while I remember. Because uh, that's what we'll be using a thin blade one for parting down there. So we'll get some basic shape in this first. So again, go to use the basic tool so evening Gordon uh, say so you've arrived so uh, thanks for letting me know that you've got the stream so I know it's working all right so again just go use a standard uh, skew chisel uh, rectangle uh, go to be it could be three quarters of an inch one uh, rule of thumb is Always make sure the larger the diameter, the larger the diameter of the screw. Because otherwise, what can happen, it will catch the corners it more. So you're better using a wide one. The other rule of thumb is that is about on just below centimetre rest. Uh, and we've been just below centre there. Just go bring that camera out and a bit further in. Uh, if it's on the centre, it's very, very easy to catch that top point as a top point what digs in. So bring your two rest up a bit higher. So it's definitely on centre, if not slightly above. And that moves your tool upwards, which in turn means that long point, which is up, this is the utmost point, is further away, so it gets rid of any danger. So that is one thing to be uh, careful of, is your position of the tool. Rest. So to use it normally, on the tool rest, 
just slowly rotate it, hold it lightly. And I want it cutting about halfway. And again, just hold it very lightly. You should see the really fine shavings coming off. So let's just stop that and have a look. You go have to take my word again, but I think you'll see because that's more reflective. That is so smooth. Even 400 grade paper would not get it any better. So, yes, and that's all you're taking off is that really fine shavings. It's not dust. They are shavings, but they're so fine. Uh, and that's the idea of this, to get a really smooth finish so it cuts out sanding. So let's have a go now shaping this round. So basically a honey dipper is rounded at the end so just pick it up and roll. So it's just like you turning a bead so roll it over. So flat then start to twist the handle so it goes more towards the base of a short point. Pick it up, slide along and twist. I'm going to go on the side camera uh, so you may be able to see how the handle's coming on. Just go to hold it further down there, you may see it better. So just pick it up, slide along and twist. Slide and twist. I'm not bothered about that building up in front of me. Uh, that's not a problem. So again, need some shape in here. Now, if you do, you catch your short point, which is at the bottom. Some people use this around Christmas time where you may have seen Christmas trees and there's all sort of fluffy bits around them. That's how that's done. It's just purely by using uh, the bottom point or the small point. I tend to call them long point and short point. Uh, right, so just roll it in this way. Still quite large. So again, just rolling it the other way. There's no fixed size for these. Uh, depends on size of your wood. And if you're using a honey dipper, how much honey you like to pick up at once. So that's fairly smooth. So we need to do some shaping on the handle part. We'll come back to cutting the grooves in a bit. Uh, I can take this out the way we have been doing or I'm going to just rough this out slightly. Two West is a bit high but it's quite safe to use like this. Just means I'm holding my handle more horizontal. So it just means I can get this rough down then you can see a lot better what we're going to be doing tonight. So again, very quickly roughed down uh, with a spindle gouge. So again, just go back slightly, but we are right there. Uh, so we can go back to the skew. Convex, easy. Concave, relatively easy. Why do you say relatively? Because you get a clean cut between the tip of a tool and the heel. Now, if the heel is not slightly rounded over, that will be sharp and it will score the wood. So you tend to find out, you look at it afterwards and think it's all scored. A uh, couple of ways. One is just take it off on a grinder. The second is just a diamond file and just round over that heel 
so it makes it nice and blunt so it doesn't score uh, some people uh, put a convex grind on here rather than a concave because it's concave automatically if you use uh, a, a grinder like I do with a 6 inch wheel on even an 8 inch will still put almost the same radius on there's very little difference a lot of people think an 8 inch grinder uh, will make it less concave but it's a fraction that's all it don't make uh, hardly any difference uh, but we'll come to that next week when we do sharpening. Uh, so my bevel is concave. And that's why you can maybe see just maybe too shiny for the camera. But there's a shiny part just here at the bottom of a heel and right at the top. So when I use a diamond file across it, like so, when I'm putting that on there, it's touching the top and the heel. And in the centre, it's missing it. So virtually, in time, that sharp edge right at the very end and that part will get closer and closer together as we remove a concave. So uh, then I go back to my grinder, but I tend to use a diamond file purely because uh, it's easier and gives a cleaner finish on the cutting edge. And why do you want to keep cleaner edge? Because I'm using a skew to get a clean cut. Uh, so again, concave, just lift, bring it into a cut and just slide and stop. Same with a screw chisel, a spindle with a finger out or any on spindle work where the grain is running parallel from headstock to tailstock. Same rules apply, always go downhill. So again, just picking that up. So you see, we do get slightly more ridges when you go down if you don't do a convex grind. Lend the other way. Bringing that down there. Joining them two up together and then just come the other way and merge them two together. Stop the lathe and then we'll just round this top part over slightly. Again, I'm pulling the two rest away while the lathe stopping, not going inwards. So again, I'm now using my long point. I sometimes prefer to use my long point to all beads. But short point is what most people do. I find it's as easy to do one or the other. What's the advantage of using the long point rather than a round one? You get better visibility. Just cut down there to get rid of some of that waste. So basically doing half a V, but we'll come to that at the other end. So again, just roll that over. So flat on virtually on the two rest. The blade is flat. Then pick up on the short point. Slowly twist over. And then now, is the skew chisel my favourite tool? Yes and no. For doing a plain cut across to get it smooth, yes. Uh, for doing beads, I prefer uh, my spindle gouge, but that is just me. So I've just dropped my tool rest back down now slightly uh, because I am going to be doing uh, some V cuts. Why? Well, we've got plenty of material here. Uh, so we can take some away but let's see what happens if you just go in with a v cut uh, with a parting tool so i'm just going to go there i know now i've said that it won't happen but a lot of time it can splinter 
it can splinter it up. I don't want to go in with a wide one, but we'll go in with this one again, see if it will. Nope. Wood's too fine of a tool. Unfortunately for this operation, what I've tried to show you is too sharp, but it can splinter up. So sometimes I prefer to do uh, a V cut first just to cut the fibres with a skew and then I'll go in with a parting tool. So let's just show you that method. So what I'm going to do is just mark it out. This could be marked out with a set of dividers for equal spacing. I'm just going to eyeball it up. So that's the first part of a V cut straight in. The second part is just swing your handle. I go to the left first and just go in. I'm going to do a few of these at once. That's already cut so we don't need to do it. Then I swing my handle to my right and come in from the right hand side. You can see the little parts coming out. So let's do these down here. I'll do them in one go each. So I've been straight in. Then swing my handle to my left. Now I'm swinging it to my right. Again, keeping the handle or the blade vertically. Because if I roll it over or lean it to one side, that's when it can grab. So we've got that nice and clean now. Just wider of these are than uh, the width of a parting tool. So that means we won't be actually cutting the top surface. We'll be slightly underneath the surface. So that will prevent any break out of the top. Again, this could be done with uh, a pair of calipers, but you're going to need some really small thin spring calipers to get in these narrow grooves. Uh, I tend to just do them by art. So again, I could start with this one here. Just go in. Stop. Don't forget to pull out on the tool wrist. Don't lift it up. And pull straight out. Next one. And I'm looking at the back edge. I'm looking over the far side to gauge the depth. So again, I'm just looking at the diameter in the centre of that one. And then turning this one down to the same diameter. Now again, when using anything like this, I don't think you need to worry if it's just slightly out in dimensions. So again, slide out and then the last one. So again, that's with the parting tool. Uh, you've no choice. You can't use any other tool uh, for that operation. So again, uh, that's smooth. I say sycamore. It doesn't need sanding. And I'll say at one time there was talk of not being able to use abrasive paper on food items in case the particles came off and then got into the open grain or anything and then that got transferred to the food uh, but uh, that regulation didn't go ahead so that's not a problem but uh, if it had a done it would have been any food item purely down to uh, uh, turning no sanding so again I'm just going to shape this end down then we'll just in fact no I'll come back to this middle section because there's a ridge in it and unless that whiz goes I won't be happy uh, and that's the only way you develop your skill is saying, no, I'm not happy with it. So again, make sure you always go on your heel. Just lift the tool handle towards my body. Now you can see it's cutting. Just slide down. Just going really, really fine. Again, just going across bottom. If I come up a fraction, that's all it is a fraction. It's virtually 
very very little so I'm happy with that side and that I just want to bring down it's something minor you may not see it on camera uh, but I can feel it that's better that feels smooth so now we'll come to the tailstock end thin that down then we'll thin the top end down and then what we'll do is more or less part it off so again can't go over way because of revolving center so again just using the low point to pair down there but I say it can be left with so I'm just with the hole in the center so I'm just going down there you get used to how far the revolving center penetrates the wood uh, and that should be down here rough now uh, to just clean up by hand how far you go down uh, it's not a matter of being how brave you are but if you go down too thin don't forget the revolving centers in it's pointed it could split and that could come out lead and you don't want that so again we're just doing this part just make sure it's all clear so again a V cut to just open that up if I go down all the way in this side it's not necessary because this is waste wood but what I just want to show to you is that's end grain that is clean no torn grain there at all so we are sharp skew you can get right down there I'm just go bring my camera down and over it may just go out of focus for a second it may I think it's just gone slightly out of focus there but you may see that is really smooth so again uh, there's no substitute for uh, a sharp tool I just need to get that just right again for you again I'm just watching the delay on that as well so uh, even going to my computer uh, there's about a, a second or two seconds delay so now I've got that thin down again I just want to increase the waste area here can I go in this way yes can I go in with a parting tool take that down. don't want to go too near to the top of the finished item why because we're parting to unless you go really slowly and carefully it will tear the grain so we'll go back to the skew chisel now So again just want to run it over always maintain a forward pressure if you relaxed I mean I'm not holding it heavily or pushing heavily but if you let it like relax it will want to push out and spin outwards just down to centrifugal force so again just nibbling that down because don't forget this is the top what people are handling and looking at now we're down to about three millimeter uh, and to go any further that's go to risk breaking it off so I'll just release the pressure on that and you can just see we've got that tiny bit there at the end to just finish off but you can see there's a hole in it uh, I can use the skew chisel again but always push away so I'll just bring that into line there so always push away and do it nice and slowly if you've got one of them really fine bladed saws could you use that yes uh, could you use a belt or disc sander just to remove some of this I think you know what the answer is uh, so again I can just carefully pair it away but you get the idea is just pair it away 
uh, you're better pairing a bit more off than thinking, oh, I'll just take that one more cut and then you find out that uh, it comes flying off and uh, it gets damaged. So yeah, that would be finished off by just sanding that end. So just that little stem there, stub there, which again I would do. Uh, what can you do in this end? Right, the temptation is, I'm just going to get uh, my little saw. So uh, the temptation is, uh, I don't want that end. Just put it onto the. Uh, this is a bit like a a sledgehammer to a nut. But uh, just go back to the top camera again. It, think, oh, I'll just snap it off. It will pull the grain and tear it. So again, uh, just come slightly off. Uh, Again, this would be better in advice. That's almost through. I'm just going to pick that up because if I don't pick it up, we all know what I'm going to do. Put my foot on it and then go flying. So again, that's got that almost clean again, as you can see. Just bring it down a bit and it gets in focus. And then it's just the same as before. Just pair it off. And then I'll just give it a quick sand. A um, couple of minutes of sanding. If not, uh, I'd say a minute and end. Uh, if that, we'll just clean that up. And that would be clean and easy to use. Again, sycamore beets, purely because it's going to be dumped in honey, then it goes, uh, could be left there, depending on what you prefer, or it's going to be taken out and washed. Again, I'm going to state the obvious, uh, I would not ever recommend uh, a dishwasher. Uh, I'd always recommend hand, uh, hand washing it. Uh, but uh, that's a very simple project. What can be done with a skew chisel? Uh, if you do shallow curves, it's easy. If you do really steep ones, uh, I would prefer a spindle gouge without any questions uh, but that's a li nice little simple project uh, just to get your screw chisel uh, techniques up but I say the main one keep it above the two rest have your two rest slightly higher uh, because that will sort a lot of problems out with the lathe stay straight once you've got a piece of wood down to a cylinder just put your screw chisel on at the normal height I say with a lathe off and look how close the utmost point, which is long point, is to touch the wood. Then lift the wood to rest up a then look and you'll see the top point is a lot further away. And the top point is the danger one, not the lower one, it's always the top one. So again, thank you for uh, joining in tonight. Uh, so next week is on sharpening. So again, I'm going to be using my standard 6 inch grinder uh, with some very simple uh, attachments uh, that one is a bit more complicated and it's unnecessary uh, I'll show you more on this one or use that platform which is just a possible version of that uh, and some setting jigs and that will enable you to sharpen all your standard six basic standard turning tools very easily and what's more a repeatable angle every single time the same angle you'll achieve so uh, and that's what most people struggle with uh, but it's a very simple method so thank you for tuning in on this uh, bank holiday Monday and uh, take care everybody and we'll see you next week thank you good night <laughs>